Welcome everyone to Cornerstone Television Network. I'm Pastor Gary Mitrick, and this is such a significant season as we are celebrating the Feast of Pentecost celebration. And we are blessed and honored to have with us our dear friend, part of our Cornerstone Family Network here, Dr. Pastor Larry Huck. Welcome, my friend. It's great to have you with us again. Oh, Gary, it's so good to be with you guys. I love Cornerstone. I love all you guys that are up there and what you do for the kingdom of God and all your people, all your partners. It's so great to be with you and Cornerstone and all your people. You guys just do such an amazing job for the kingdom of God. Well, thank you. And we always enjoy having you because you give us such rich, anointed nuggets about all of the feasts. Of course, we celebrated Passover, uh, and then now we're in the Feast of Pentecost, and in the fall, we will celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles, and we want to really get in and have you dig in to that teaching. But let me just take a quick moment because, you know, Israel is in the news, hits the headlines every day, and oh, if there's ever a time we need to be praying for peace in the Middle East. And we need an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Pastor Larry. It is now. You know, it, it, absolutely, Pastor Gary. It, that's, that couldn't be more true. And I hope everybody catches this. You know, in ancient Hebrew, and I say this all the time so people will grab what God is doing and what God is saying. In ancient Hebrew, there's no word for coincidence. That's why the Lord says, blessed are you who have eyes to see and ears to hear. And so understanding that here we are entering into the feast of Pentecost. Uh, in Hebrew, it's called Shavuot. And at the same time that we're entering into a time of great power and great prosperity, at that same time, there's a teaching called the Evot. Of something, which means what comes first. It it means if you understand the first of something, then it fathers or it births all the rest of the blessings that follow. For example, uh, the Ten Commandments. You you have to understand the first commandment. God is God before the rest of the commandments work. Um, put on the armor of God. The first part of the armor. None of it works unless you understand the evil, the father, the, the, the birthing of all the other blessings. The very first blessing, Gary, in the Bible is I will bless those who bless Israel. Amen. Amen. And I will curse those who curse Israel. And that's always been true, but there's never been a time that the church needs to hear this and understand this. If we have ever needed for God to bless us with a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit, a fresh anointing of the power of God, of signs and wonders and miracles, a fresh anointing of the prosperity of God, which is released like no other time of the year right now during Pentecost, if we've ever needed this, it's at the same time that Israel needs us to stand with them and be a blessing to Israel. Just think about this. Uh, and I know, and, and I so loved uh, doing this with you guys at Cornerstone, Gary, because um, you, you guys are, are not only receiving an offering that is so important. It's, it's it, This offering right now opens the windows of heaven, and we'll talk about this, but you're helping us to buy an ambulance, and literally an ICU unit on wheels. This is, I think, our seventh or eighth that we bought, and we got contact. It was on the news, and we got contact with um, with our friends over there. The, the ambulance company is Mugam David Adom, the Red Star of David, and right now, Two of our ambulances are on the Gaza border, not only saving 
Jewish lives, but actually saving Palestinian lives because a lot of the rockets that they're shooting in are hitting their own people. And so think about the blessing of God that always comes when we understand the first fruit offering, but also right now as this first fruit offering is going to literally saving people's lives, blessing the nation of Israel. And God said he's going to command his blessing on us. This is a great, great, great time for Christians to understand God is getting ready to do, and I mean this with all my heart, Pastor Gary, God is getting ready right now to open the windows of heaven over us, as it says in Malachi, as we've never seen before. It's so important, and I so thank you guys for allowing me to teach this during the time of Pentecost. Amen. So you stay tuned because Pastor Larry is going to be praying with you for Israel and for peace there in the Middle East. And we're also going to be sharing with you how you can literally be a blessing to Israel at this time. Well, let's go to Leviticus 23 for just a moment. I want to read verses 1 and 2. It says, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, The feasts of the Lord which you shall proclaim shall be holy convocations. And then I love this, Pastor Larry. The, the Lord says, these are my feasts. So often so there's important. been a veil over New Testament Christians that we think these are Old Testament feasts or just oh. Jewish feasts, but the Lord says they're mine. They're my feasts. And, and Gary, what you said there... We, we hadn't talked before. I was going to start with that very teaching because so many people have been blinded. They don't have eyes to see. They don't have ears to hear because we've been taught those are only the Jewish people's feast or those are Old Testament feast. Remember when Jesus said, when we give, God will give back to us 30, 60 a hundredfold. Yes. Now, yes. everybody knows this, but sometimes we need to remember. Why did Jesus say 30, 60, a hundredfold? And a hundredfold means unlimited. Well, he wasn't just grabbing some numbers and using an illustration. He's talking about the feast of the Lord. We need to remember that Jesus was Jewish. Jesus was a rabbi. And in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, when Jesus is teaching, he's teaching Jews that understand things that many Christians don't understand. He's teaching Jews that understand the Old Testament, understand the Torah. You know, when Jesus says it's written, it's written in Scripture, what Scripture is he talking about? He's talking about the Old Testament. He's talking about the Torah. Jesus didn't make anything new up. He came, when we talk about a new covenant, that word new means a fresh covenant. It's the same covenant promises. We who believe in Jesus are heirs to the promises of Abraham. Because of Jesus, we have been grafted in. And so when Jesus is talking about 30, 60, 100 fold, He's talking about the fulfillment of the promises of God when we understand what these feasts are. 30 is Passover, 60 is Pentecost, unlimited, 100%, our unlimited blessing is the Feast of Tabernacles. This is where Jesus got 30, 60, 100 fold. Now, let me, let me say this, and I know most people understand this, Pastor Gary. I know you understand it so well. But in Malachi, if you read the book of Malachi, Malachi was written uh, right after Israel came back from 70 years of Babylonian captivity. Right. They're in, they're in captivity. Their enemy has conquered them. And now by a miracle of God, that's what the whole book of Esther is about, by a miracle of God, 
God releases the Jews out of Babylonian captivity, and now they're back in Jerusalem. That's what the book of Malachi is. If you, if you look at many of your Bibles, we'll say this, but pastor, it's called the great assembly. All, in Malachi, all the sages, all the prophets, all the great rabbis are meeting together in the great assembly in the city of Jerusalem, and they're praying. And they're saying, God, how do we, how do we position ourselves? What do we need to do so that our enemy doesn't destroy us anymore? Our enemy doesn't defeat us anymore. And so they're praying, and God gives an answer. And Malachi, by inspiration of God, speaks up, and he says, return unto me. That, that word return in Hebrew is the word Teshuvah. It's a very powerful word. Return unto me, and when you, believers in God, return to me, then I, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Sitkanu, Jehovah Mekadesh, Jehovah Shalom, I, the God of everything you need, I will return to you. Now think about that, church. They're praying and said, God... <laughs> The enemy's defeating us. And boy, isn't that kind of looking like it's happening right now in, let's just say, in America. It looks like you look at all the crazy policies that are being passed, all the things that are being released in our country. And we need to be like Israel was coming out of Babylon. Lord, how do we keep the enemy from defeating us as the children of God, as a nation, as the kingdom of God. And God says, because, and he, remember he says, I'm the Lord God and I don't change. So the answer that God gave the Israelites in the book of Malachi is the same answer he gives us every single year. God says, return to me. And when you return to me, you, me, you, Gary, everybody watching, when we return to God, God will return to us. So they said, man, that's ex that's wonderful. That's awesome. How do we return? And God gives a strange answer because we read the Bible with the minds of a Gentile instead of the minds of a Jew. We can't read the Bible like we're from Dallas, Texas, or, or Pittsburgh. We have to read the Bible from the eyes of a Jewish Jesus, a Jewish Malachi, Amen. a Jewish Peter and Paul. That's the only way we can understand it. So when God says, return unto me, and I'll return unto you, they said, how do we return? And he says, in your tithe, and we know what a tithe is, but he also says, in your offering. Now, we think an offering is something we give on top of our tithe, but it's much more powerful than that. The offering that the Lord is speaking about is that 30, 60, 100 fold. Three times a year, you come before the Lord and you do not come empty handed. Now think about what God says when we do this, I will, when you do this, when you come to me on Passover, on Pentecost, on Feast of Tabernacles, when you come to me with these offerings, prove me if I won't over you open the windows of heaven. Now, I know most people know this, Pastor, but let me say this. The reason why Israel went into 70 years of captivity is because their nation prior to this was so blessed, they quit tithing and they quit bringing their offerings to the temple three times a year. So the reason why they their enemy defeated them is because they were so blessed, they were basically saying, God, we don't need you anymore. We don't need you. We need to remember, and every moment of every day, Pastor, but we need to remember, folks, that God says, I'm the one 
who gives you power in your hands to gain wealth. The reason why America is so blessed is because we are one nation under God, Amen. the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, and because of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we have been grafted into that blessing. And when we forget it's him who's made America so great, it's him who gives us power in our hands to gain wealth. When we forget that, the windows of heaven begin to close. And so, so that we don't forget that, pastor, three times a year, God tells us, when you come before the Lord, you do not come empty-handed. And when you do this, I will open up for you the windows of heaven. That word window in Hebrew is the word you showed. So this Pentecost, when we bring an offering before God, God opens that window. That window doesn't hover over us. And then someday when we finally obey God, he opens it. That window passes by us. That window is passing over every one of you that are watching right now. That window on God's appointed time. Is there not an appointed time? And, and I, we say this all the time. God is God 24-7. Every moment of every day, Pastor Gary, folks, God is God. But the Bible says, call on the Lord while he is near. What does that mean? That during these appointed times, during these Moedims, these appointed times on God's calendar, he's the same God, but God is closer to yes. us than any other time of the year. During this time of Pentecost, and I'll read a scripture here, Pastor, during this time, folks, during this time of Pentecost, when we bring that offering, the window of heaven opens up. Each one in Passover, there's a different blessing. In Pentecost, there's a different blessing. In Sukkot, our Feast of Tabernacles, there's a different blessing. Right now, the window of heaven is waiting to open up over every one of us, every one of you, if we'll respond, return to me, it's my move, it's your move, it's our move, and when we return to God with this offering to be a blessing to the kingdom of God and because Cornerstone is so, so gracious, be a blessing to the nation of Israel, God opens the window of heaven. And right now, there is a special anointing that God will release. As a matter of fact, let, let, Pastor, let me read something here to you. Listen to this. It says in Leviticus 23, we get down to the end. It says, you shall, verse 15, you shall count for yourselves from the day after the Sabbath. Now, this is the day after Passover, the day after resurrection of Christ. From the day that you have brought the sheave of wave offering, you shall count seven Sabbaths, that's seven weeks, seven days times seven, 49. Seven Sabbaths shall be completed. Count 50 days to the day after the seventh Sabbath. Then you shall offer a new grain offering to the Lord. Now look at verse 17, folks. And you shall bring from your habitations two wave loaves, of two tenths of an ephah, and they shall be a fine flour, and they shall be baked with leaven. They are the first fruits of the Lord. Now, so, so Pastor Larry, folks, me, even though we're even though celebrating Pentecost 50 days after Resurrection Sunday and Good Friday, they were literally celebrating it for what, like 1,500 years in the Old Testament. Well put, well put, Pastor. You know, when we teach this on our television program there in Cornerstone, Tiz always brings up, my wife always brings up, she said, I thought Pentecost started, you know, in Acts chapter 1 when right. the day, and Acts chapter 2 when the day of Pentecost had fully come. But they were all, all the Jews were at the temple 
when the Holy Spirit fell. Why were they at the temple? They were bringing their first fruit offering absolutely as the scripture says. In, in English, we call it Pentecost. In the church world, we call it Pentecost, which is the 50th day. That's where we get the word. In Hebrew, they call it Shavuot, which means the Feast of Weeks. Seven weeks plus one, and on Shavuot, on the seventh week, God met with Moses and gave the Jewish people, and thus the world, the Ten Commandments and the Bible. On that day that God met Moses, and we know the tablets, and he wrote down the Ten Commandments, and he gave the Torah to the world, on that same exact day, on that same exact day, 50 days after Israel left the bondage of Egypt, 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus, the same exact day the Holy Spirit fell, God says, on that day, I want you to bring, and I, it's so important that we catch this. He said, I want you to bring how many loaves? Not one, but two loaves. There's a, there's a very, very powerful revelation in why God says two loaves. Number one, the two loaves represent the birth of Judaism and the birth of Christianity. But also, when God opens the window of heaven, when you bring your offering to Cornerstone on this high holiday, God opens the window of heaven that the, the you showed the funnel from the throne of God, the power of God, the return of God's anointing to your life, and he releases two gifts. He releases the anointing for power, signs and wonders and miracles. Amen. And 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 do, do we still believe in miracles? Gary, you know that three years, almost three years ago, my grandson was diagnosed with incurable leukemia at seven months. We're going through that, and then they diagnosed his, with my wife, with ovarian cancer. We sat in the office and said, maybe three months you have. We have a new medicine. We can maybe get you three months, maybe a little bit more. Here we are, two and a half, three years later, my grandson is totally cancer-free, healthy Hallelujah. as can be. Tiz is totally cancer-free, healthy as can be. We need, every one of you needs the power of the Holy Spirit. The anoint, we need the power of the Holy Spirit back in the church. We need the power of God. When you think about Pentecost, the last thing, remember in, book, in, in the book of Acts, chapter 1, the disciples came to Jesus, Pastor, and they said, what will be the sign of your coming? Jesus said, that's not important. Don't you leave until you receive the Holy Spirit. Don't you leave. The last things Jesus said was don't leave. I'm, I'm going to start a series here because I feel in, in Dallas here, Pastor, on the baptism of the Holy Spirit the power of the living God. We have got to, you have got to, people, get the power of Amen. God back in our lives. If the last thing our Lord and Savior says is don't leave, and he says that to the first church, how much more do we as the last church need the power of God moving in our lives? So the anointing of God, for signs and wonders and miracles and 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 the power of God. The other loaf, the other offering is for prosperity. Now God prospers us every time we give, God brings prosperity. But the offering of Pentecost of Shavuot, that offering, the one loaf is for signs and wonders and miracles, the power of God. The second loaf is that God reminds us it is him who gives us power in our hands to gain wealth. We need to return at every Christian, every American, every person in the world 
needs to return to the fact and the understanding that it is God who gives us power in our hands. When Jesus shed his blood seven different times, seven different times, one of those was he shed his blood in his hand because he said, everything you put your hands to, I will cause it to prosper. We need, I think, I think, Pastor, I think American, I'm, I'm speaking mainly to Americans now, but this is true all over the world. I think Americans have received, I hope we've received a wake up call the same way Israel did in the book of Malak, Malachi. I think we got so prosperous and we got so full of ourselves in some ways that we forgot that it is God who is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. And this offering brings us back to that understanding, just like the prophet in Malachi. God says, return to me and I will return to you. They had forgotten that it was God who gave them power to get wealth. And I'm prophesying on everyone. There's going to be a great awakening. I'm telling you this by the spirit of God. For everybody who has eyes to see and ears to hear and everybody who returns to this offering of old, there's going to be an awakening starting this week. There's an awakening of the power and the anointing and the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives, in our homes, in our families, in our churches, and there is an end time release. Remember, the Bible says that one of the signs of the coming of the Messiah is the wealth of the wicked will Amen. be put in the hands of the righteous. And the word righteous means those who are holy, but it also means those who are doing good deeds. Don't worry about what you're going to eat, where you're going to wear, what you're going to wear, where you're going to sleep, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That word righteous there, Pastor, in that case means to seek acts of kindness. And that's why I love partnering with Cornerstone and all your people, Pastor, because you are always looking for a way to be a blessing to Israel. Folks, Amen. this is a double blessing yes, that's coming yes. on this offering oh. during the time of Shavuot and during the time of Pentecost. Don't miss the open windows of heaven. It's happening right now, and God wants it to happen for every one of you. Oh, are you hearing that? This is a time for the double portion blessing to fall. I believe that word return to me is a now word for America and for the church. And when we think that the last words, which are usually the last thing you say to someone before you leave them, are usually the most important. You tell them you love them. You tell them you're going to miss them. You say the most important thing last. Well, the last words before the Lord ascended into heaven was receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And we're going to give you an opportunity. I want to go to Deuteronomy 16 and read verses uh, 16 and 17 real quick for you. Uh, and because this is, this, is, this is what Pastor Larry's been saying three times in a year. All the males shall appear before the Lord your God in the place which he chooses at the Feast of Unleavened Bread. That was at Passover. We celebrated that during Holy Week. And then at the Feast of Weeks. They call this Pentecost the Feast of Weeks because it's seven weeks after Passover and Resurrection Sunday. And then in the fall, the Feast of Tabernacles. It says, and they shall not appear before the Lord empty-handed. Every man shall give as he is able according to the blessing of the Lord your God, which he has given you. And we're going to put the phone number up on the screen, 888-665-4483. If you desire and want to get in on this Feast of Pentecost celebration offering for your best gift of any amount, we have this anointing oil. It's frankincense and myrrh anointing oil. 
from the Holy Land that we would like to give to you as our thank you for sowing your Pentecost offering, your very best gift. And then, of course, penta means five or 50, 50 days after Passover. For those of you, everyone can't do this, but for those of you that can sow a gift of $500 or more one time, you can put it on your credit or debit card, or if you'd like, you could do $50 a month. 50 is the number of jubilee. God wants us out of debt. He wants to prosper us. $50 a month for 10 months, you will not only receive the frankincense and myrrh oil from the Holy Land, but Pastor Larry's ministry, he's put out a powerful teaching both on CD and DVD called Pentecost, The Power to Prosper. And Pastor Larry, I love that double portion that God wants to not only pour out His Spirit upon us, but He also wants us to prosper as well if we will return to Him while this window in heaven is open with our Pentecost celebration gift. You know, Pastor Gary, that's absolutely right. And I think a lot of times... And folks, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna teach this to you right now because I feel very strong. We have no problem with wanting the anointing of God, the power of God, lay hands on the sick, uh, the gifts of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit. We've got no problem because that that is we know that is the will of God. But you have to understand, it is also the will of God to prosper you. When you think about Israel leaving Egypt, and, and, and uh, wait do you hear what I'm about to tell you. When you think about Israel leaving Egypt, they left, number one, because of the power of God. We know the 10 plagues. We know everything that God did, and then Pharaoh let them go. But what we need to remember is that that is a shadow of things to come. We're on the way to our promised land as children of God. When Israel was leaving Egypt, God speaks to Moses. Ancient Jewish wisdom tells us God speaks to Moses and tells them. Now, listen, listen to this with your heart. God tells them, God says to Moses, beg my children, do not leave without the silver and the gold. Now, we've all heard the prophecy of the end time transfer of wealth, the wealth of the wicked being put in the hands of the righteous. We have a shadow of that. We have the first example of that when the Israelites who were slaves, they were slaves in Egypt when they left Egypt. And by the way, and you'll understand this in a minute, the word Egypt, the name Egypt means limits or boundaries. When they left Egypt, they didn't leave as slaves. They left with all the wealth and all the silver and all the gold. This is God's will. Every time, Pastor, I know you know this, but folks, listen to me. We're all waiting for the end time outpouring of the Spirit. I believe it's here right now. I believe the pandemic. I believe the economic crisis. I believe everything that everybody's gone through the last two years is a wake-up call to the church of saying, God saying, return to me, come back to me, and I will return to you, and I will, you talk about making America great again, America be great again, when the power of God and the blessing of God and the favor of God is on you and every Christian and every Jew. When God had Israel leave Egypt, the Bible literally says they plundered the place. They were slaves, now listen to this, they were slaves, but as they began their journey, they had all the silver and all the gold and all the flocks given to them. This is the end time transfer of wealth. Now here's a tremendous revelation. Why did God wait 50 days, as Pastor Gary said, 
Pentecost, why did God wait 50 days until he released the, 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 the power of God on Moses and the Bible? Why did God wait 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus till he released the Holy Spirit? There's a very powerful reason why 50 days. In ancient Jewish wisdom, it says there are 49 levels of spiritual growth. It teaches us that when Israelites, when the Israelites were in Egypt, they had sunken down to the lowest level. And so they had to wait 50 days. That's why the Bible says count for yourself. No one can do this. You have to prepare yourself for this offering. You have to prepare yourself for the windows of heaven to open up. But to make it simple, they had to go from the slave mentality to the children of God mentality. Ah, yes. Now listen to this. They had to go from relying on, on Egypt to give them their leeks and their garlic to believing that no man is their provider but Almighty God is Jehovah Jireh, their provider. That's happening right now. We need to understand that Washington, D.C. is not our provider, that Wall Street is not our provider, that no man is our provider. It is God who gives you power. It is God who gives you anointing in your hands to gain that wealth. Prosperity and favor from God is not a bad thing. It is a promise of God to every one of us when he, during Pentecost, opens up this window of heaven. Now, I'll give you something else here to think about. When they gave their first offering in Egypt, it was a barley offering. If you read the scripture, it says it very plainly. It was a barley offering. Barley is what the slaves ate. Barley is what the masters gave the slaves. Barley is what they fed the cattle with. In other words, the Egyptian government looked at the children of God with no more value than cattle. But when they get to Pentecost and God said, I'm ready to open up over you the windows of heaven, when they get to Shavuot, or Pentecost, they didn't bring a barley offering, a slave offering, an animal offering, a nobody offering. They brought an offering of wheat because they had trans they had gone, they had they had climbed the ladder from from trusting Egypt with a slave mentality of barely getting by. They had gone all the way up until they realized. We are the children of God, and it is our Father's good pleasure to give to us the kingdom. Listen, the power of God can fall. We can have signs and wonders and miracles, but folks, we have to have the finances into your hands Amen. for the power of God. If it wasn't for finances, we wouldn't be on the air. Cornerstone would not be on the air. You would not be watching us right now. But even more than that, when we when what a trick of the devil. What a trick of the devil to teach that prosperity is bad. Because if all we have is enough to get by, then we're not feeding the widows and the orphans. We're not taking care of the homeless. We're not buying ambulances, ICU units like Cornerstone is helping us do, hospitals, bomb shelters. Um, uh, Pastor Gary, we, we here at New Beginnings, just one of the things we do outside of Israel, we have several orphanages feeding children. We get to feed 50,000 kids every month in Africa. You can't do that if all you're doing is getting by. Let, let, let me show something to you real quick here, folks. You need to see this. When God created the world, everything he created, he said, it is good. It is very good. Why did he create those things? To be a blessing. 
He created everything to bless our lives. Our God is not a hard taskmaster. Our God is not on a budget. Our God is the God who owns the cattle on a thousand hills. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The silver and the gold belong to the Lord. Everything God created, he created to bless your life, not just to get by, but to bless your life, good measure, pressed down, shaking together, overflowing. Everything he created, he said, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. But watch this. There is nowhere that God says, here's where the mountains are. Here's where the cattle are. Here's where the fish are. But listen to this. Let me show you this in in, uh, Genesis chapter 2. Look at this. Verse 10 It says, now a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from there it parted and became four riverheads. Now, just just a side note, all of Eden wasn't a garden. The word Eden means voluptuous living. And and so there was a, look, look at it again. There is a river that went out of Eden to water the garden. The garden was only part of Eden. Verse 11, the name of the first is Pishon. It is the one which encompasses the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. And it says Bilam and Onyx and stone, and it goes on. Ancient Jewish wisdom says, God didn't show us where the cattle were. God didn't show us where the rivers were. God didn't show us where the fish were. The only thing in creation that God gives direction to is where the gold was. He says, number one, the gold is good. Number two, here's where the gold lies. Ancient Jewish wisdom says, when we understand that our God is an awesome God. Our God is a generous God. And when we serve God the way God says to serve it, he will, think about this, the Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us and teach us and show us things to come. That is true spiritually, but that is also true financially and business. Ancient Jewish wisdom says, The only thing God says, I'm going to show you where it is, is the wealth of the world. When we return to the Lord and we acknowledge him as the one who gives us power to gain wealth, on the day of Pentecost, he will bring an anointing. There is going to be new signs and wonders and miracles. I have a great friend, Pastor Gary, a, a believer, a Jewish man in Jerusalem, brilliant man. And when he found out about Lion and then he found about Tiz, he called me. And he said, Pastor Larry, he said, everyone in the world needs to serve the Lord. But when someone goes through the valley of darkness like this, it's so that when you get on the other side, you can look back and see others coming through that need help and reach out and tell them what a mighty God we serve. Not just because I read it because we have lived it. We have seen this last two years, miracles. I'm not talking lightly, I'm talking miracles. So I I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt that God wants to release power into your life. Power, they gave my grandson, Pastor, no hope. They have never had a child with this kind of leukemia survive. He is, they, they told us, God put a gene in him that no one in medical history, no child his age in medical history has ever had. There's nowhere in the world, anyone who has it. Why? So I can tell you, listen, what a mighty God we serve. What a powerful God we serve. Doesn't matter what you need, God's miracle power is there. But I also wanna tell you that it is him who gives you the anointing to gain wealth. Everything the enemy has stolen during this pandemic or any time, for those of us who are understanding that we're coming before the Lord, 
You're watching, once again, in ancient Hebrew, there's no word for, car for, for coincidence. You're watching Cornerstone because God wants to release the power of God in your life and God wants to release the Holy Spirit to give you wisdom on how to do business, how to gain finances, the power of God and the, and the anointing for finances is what comes through. He, God's got every moment of every day, but this is the moment of the year. In, in, in just a, a, a short time, that window closes. And Pastor, I'm going to turn it back to you here, but I want you to, folks to understand, think about, I, when I think about three times a year, we come before the Lord. And if we respond, he opens the window of heaven. I think about blind Bartimaeus. Jesus came walking by. He never went that way again. Never. It was the window of opportunity. Yes. And everybody's sitting at the gate with their needs. But Bartimaeus says, who is this? He hears the noise. They said, it's Jesus. And he heard about the miracles that Jesus would do. And he cried out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And they said, don't bother him. This is not, this is not a good time. Don't bother the rabbi. But he wouldn't be held back. And he cried out the louder. And what does the Bible say? Jesus Christ, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Sidkenu, Jehovah Mekedesh, Jehovah Shalom, stopped when he grabbed that window of opportunity. And he said, bring him to me. Then he said to blind Bartimaeus, what is it that you need? Listen, I can tell you, if you need a healing of cancer, there's not a greater time to receive the power of God. You need a miracle of sometime in your home, your marriage. Our God is a miracle God. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But also, if you need a financial breakthrough, this is your Moedim, Pastor Gary. This is your appointed time. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. If the rapture doesn't take place, this moment will not come around again for one whole year. But I believe those who have eyes to see and ears to hear, you're watching Cornerstone. God wants you to be a part of this great, great, great blessing when we understand. And you know what? It's not the truth that sets us free. It's the truth that we know. It's the truth we understand. That's why I, I love Cornerstone allowing us to teach this because this truth in every area will release the power of God into your life. Oh, this is so, this so, is good. so, so that good. That window of Pentecost is over us right now. And for all of you, for your very best gift, pray about what the Lord would have you to do. We will send you this frankincense and myrrh oil from the Holy Land as our gift to you. You can anoint people in your home to be healed. You can anoint your mailbox and your checkbook. You can anoint your car in your home and just use it to just allow the power of the Lord to be released into your life. And for all of you, everyone can't do this, but if you are able to give a gift of $500 or more one time, you could put it on your credit or your debit card, or if you do $50 a month for 10 months, remember 50 is the number for Pentecost, 500, that number for Pentecost, we will send you Dr. Larry's teaching on Pentecost, the power to prosper. It's in both CD and DVD format. For your gift of $500 or more, maybe some of you could do $1,000 or, or $5,000. We want you to go to your phone, 888-665-4483. For your best gift, we will send you the frankincense and myrrh anointing oil. For your gift of $500 or more, the CD and DVD on Pentecost, the power to prosper, along with the oil, 
And then remember, and this is so, so important, with all the bombings, all the turmoil, all the unrest in Israel and in the Middle East, we are taking the tithe, the tenth off of every gift, and we are tithing to help purchase ICU ambulance projects. These are not just regular ambulances. This is like an ICU on wheels. And Pastor Larry shared that they've got video that with the bombings going on, some of these bombs from Palestine, they're bombing their own people. And these ambulances are not only helping the Jewish, the Israeli people, but they are also helping the people in Palestine. A lot of innocent children, innocent yes. people are being hurt and being affected by this. And you can not only be a blessing to Israel, but you, by praying for peace, but you can also in a tangible way be a blessing. Pastor Larry, we have had... A, a, a number of our partners, they've sent in prayer requests for Pentecost. And uh, we would just like for you, uh, in the moments we have left, to just pray a blessing over all of our viewers, over everyone that will be sowing that Pentecost seed for that limitation to be broken off. And for prosperity and an outpouring of the Holy Spirit to come. And then if you could just even pray over the anointing oil. That as people get it in their hands as a point of contact. It will release the power of God into our lives. Would you pray sir? Amen. Yes absolutely. And, and let me just say to everybody watching right now. The last three years in my family have been the greatest battle that we have ever faced as Christians, but we've seen the greatest victories Come on. we've ever faced as Christians. They gave my grandson no hope. He's totally healed. They gave my wife, Tiz, my best friend in the world, no hope, and she's totally healed. I wouldn't want anyone to go through that but I'm thank God we went through it so I can say to you right now, I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt, whatever prayer request you sent in or you have right now, God wants to do something for you that no one has ever seen Amen. before. Amen. Let me say it again. Lion has a gene. They came and said he has this gene in him that's not found anywhere in medical history in a child his age. And it took him from zero to 100% healed. That same God wants to do miracles for you. But I also want to release an anointing on your finances, yes, on, on your home, your business, your jobs, however you've been affected. Father, right now, we know according to your word that the windows of heaven are opened up. And Father, even as you've spoken to them to respond today, Father, respond to them in ways beyond anything that we can imagine. Touch their homes, their families, their bodies, their lives, their children, their grandchildren. I release the power of God right now. I bind the devil in every area. I bind the spirit of sickness, the yes. spirit of infirmity. I bind the devil that would come against marriages right now. And I claim healing in bodies and healing in homes. I come against the devil. I bind the devil that would attack our children. And Father, I send the power of God to bring in those of our family that we love and our friends that are lost and bring them in for miracle salvation in their lives in Jesus' name. Father, I pray over this anointing oil yes. that as they take it, and folks look at me, take that oil, put it on your children's pillow. Take that oil and put it on your checkbook. I'm I'm serious. Do an, reach out. God will partner with you in your act of faith. As you reach out and give an offering in faith, reach out and lay hands on your children's pillow. Lay hands on your children. Lay hands on your home. Lay hands on your checkbook. Lay hands because 
God has given you an anointing. And Father, I release a fresh anointing, a fresh refilling of the Holy Spirit with the power of God. God, Father, that we praise you in the understanding and we praise you in the spirit. I don't know all your needs, but the Spirit of God knows every one of your needs, and he is opening right now. I'm telling you, I, no joke, I feel the power of God yes, right now. Yes. Lift, if you're in your home, lift your hands up. I, I wish I could come and grab you because I feel the power of God in every area. No limit. The power of God, and we give Father, we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, who is the Messiah. Don't limit what God can do. Don't limit how God can do it. And don't limit who God can do it for. When you see a miracle in somebody else's life, ancient Jewish wisdom says, that's because he's wanted you to see it because he's no respecter of persons. You're next. Folks, the windows of heaven, the power of Almighty God is released in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Wow, how rich, how wonderful. There is time for you to call. So your very best Pentecostal offering. The number is there, 888-665-4483. Let me give you our address. If you need want to mail your gift in, it's Cornerstone Television Network, 1 Signal Hill Drive. We are at Wall, Pennsylvania, 15148-1499. Pastor Larry, thank you. Thank you so much for your rich, rich deposit in all of our lives. We love you. We appreciate you. God bless you as we celebrate the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.